In this video, I'll assemble and test a new router sled sent to me from Speedtool. The kit came double boxed and the parts were well packed. With this kit, your router slides along these aluminum rails for slabs up to 47.2 inches wide. These brackets adjust the height from 3 quarters of an inch up to 6 inches. They use wheels that roll on the top and sides of any flat and sturdy table. I started by attaching this knob to one of the slide brackets, the ones with wheels. This part is used like a clamp or brake. It adjusts how easily you can move the sled along the table. I'll attach the lift brackets to the aluminum rails using nuts that slide into the tracks. Make sure the slots on the sides of each rail are facing towards each other. Since I'll be using the pre-drilled plate to mount my router, I'll use the inner mounting holes to get the correct rail spacing. An extra plate is included in the kit if you need to drill custom holes for your router. I'll leave the screws loose enough so that I can adjust the position of the brackets later. I repeat the steps for the bracket on the other end of the rails. The brackets with the wheels will form the slide platform. These are attached to the lift brackets with red knob bolts and washers. The slots on the lift brackets let you raise or lower the router sled at preset increments. For now, I'll lock this one at the lowest position and repeat the process to mount the slide bracket on the other side. There's a slot on the edge of each of the lift brackets. Use this to position the bracket so that it aligns with the edge of the work surface. Once the brackets are aligned on both sides, I can tighten down the screws to lock them against the rails using a 3 16 inch Allen wrench. Now I can flip the whole assembly over and position it so that the wheels can roll along the top and sides of the table. I'm adjusting the bolt I attached to one of the slide brackets earlier until it comes into contact with the edge of the table. I leave it loose enough so that the sled can still roll along the table. This can be tightened to add more resistance or hold the sled in place to provide better control when the router is cutting. I'm now installing one of the stop blocks into the top slots of this rail. The router plate can now be inserted into the slots on the inside of each rail. The second stop block is installed behind the router plate on the opposite rail. These adjustable blocks are used to limit the movement of the router plate so that it only spans the width of your workpiece. Before I start flattening, I'll use a sturdier board for the tabletop. The sled will now roll along the 2x4s mounted to the sides of my sawhorses for added stability. Now I can attach my router base to the plate. This configuration should also help keep the paths of the wheels cleaner, since any wood chips during the process should fall off the board before they can get to the wheels. The kit I received included a large surfacing bit with four carbide inserts.
I can change the cutting height in small increments using the adjustment ring on my router. For this first test, I'll surface this slice of ash. The kit also comes with clamping brackets to hold down the workpiece. With the slab securely fastened to the table, I can see that the surface is definitely not flat as I move the sled across it. Flattening a slab is really simple. I move across the slab, then slide the sled across the table a little bit and repeat. I had to adjust one of the stop blocks to let me reach the far side of the slab. After each pass, I lower the router slightly. Depending on your router, it's best to take light passes each time. I'd recommend no more than one eighth of an inch between passes. As you repeat the back and forth movement along the slab, the surfacing bit will continue cutting down the higher spots with each pass so that more and more of the slab is getting flattened. I was noticing a bit too much resistance between the router plate and the rails, so I decided to use some paste wax to help things slide more smoothly. It also felt like the sled was rolling along the length of the table too loosely, which kept the router from following a straight line as I moved the router from side to side. So I used the side adjustment bolt to add some resistance along the table. This gave me better control through each cutting pass across the slab. Each pass will eventually get you to a point where the surfacing bit is cutting across the entire slab. This is when you know you're done. In an upcoming video, I'll be testing the dust collection attachment that Speed Tool also provided with the kit.